Hey, Uber drivers in literally any city. Meet your new best friend. All right, let's do that one more time. This is a 2011 Nissan Versa. Even the name screams designed by committee and... I have to stop for a second. Chrysler and the companies under it will currently sell you the following. A family moving SUV with more horsepower than most supercars and acceleration that will make the vomit come out of your kids really quick. A Challenger with a stupid amount of horsepower that is sold with only a driver's seat as standard and the ability to do wheelies from the factory. A fake Rolls Royce. And a ridiculous pretend soft rotor that I see everywhere in downtown Boston. Because you need to be able to manage your traction perfectly at five miles an hour in traffic on a pleasant day. And that's not all. Vipers were made this year. You can get Jeep Wranglers, including a dealer installed V8 option and countless ridiculous off-road varieties, most of which will probably barely see rainfall, and multiple flavors of pseudo-muscle car. You know what wasn't anywhere on that list? A small car everyday Americans want to buy. And, no, sorry, tiny crossover Jeeps work for some people, but that isn't an answer for everybody. People want to buy regular cars. There is a reason the Camry sells as well as it does. It is a car people love because it is the car that fits into the majority of situations that they use cars for. And Chrysler keeps going broke because they can't figure that out for themselves. So I don't want to hear so much ragging on this thing, but this is not the best handling car, but frankly, buyers just didn't care. This was a car to move the world, not to move your heart. It's not bad. It handles like you think a small hatchback would without even having to think about how a small hatchback would handle. It's not nimble in the same way a Miata is, or even a well-set-up Civic hatchback would be, but frankly, this isn't that car. This was really competing with stuff like the F-A05, which, no, no, just no. GM only makes good small cars when they pay Europe to do it for them. And the only other serious competitor was the Kia Rio, which is the reason Kia had such a bad reputation in the U.S. It's not fast, but frankly, you're never going to go above speeds that this can reach on public roads, and if you're going to, make sure you have a good lawyer. If you were driving a Versa, and you closed your eyes and tried to adjust the radio or turned up the AC, well, you'd probably crash. But if you pulled over first, and then closed your eyes and tried to adjust the radio or turn up the AC or turn the lights on, everything would be exactly where you think it should be and roughly the right shape. It's not a car you ever have to think about too hard. And it does everything sensibly. Oil changes only require lifting one side and use way less oil than most. Buying a car in America has become a giant reflection of the American dream. We feel cheated if our cars aren't bigger than the car we had before, if we don't have more toys and a louder stereo and a faster motor. The word enough in this context is inherently a bad word, as enough is not living the dream. Enough, ironically, is not enough. But in Japanese culture, the word enough means something drastically different, and this car highlights that. Enough is a luxury, it's not having to worry, and this is enough car for most people with that as the meaning. Don't take enough as a bad thing, this is what a car will do what you want it to do without you thinking about it. It moves people and things brilliantly. Let me put it to you this way. The list on the left is standard equipment in the 2011 Nissan Versa. The list on the right is from, by all means, a serious luxury car from 15 years earlier. And that's a ridiculous opulent nightmare to own with depreciation and expensive mechanics and imported parts costs so much. This is every bit like the same level of car as that, just wrapped differently. Because enough really is a luxury if you look at it the right way. 